Is that a new tracksuit? <laughs> Did you get it for Christmas? Is this like? Is this yeah, on? it's on. Uh, I bought it for myself. For Christmas? Yeah. Not for Christmas. I went out on Christmas Eve to buy stuff and ended up buying a couple of uh, boss tracks. I need that man bag thing. You know the one you wear? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And like, getting on the plane with that man bag and then I can be like you, just like you. Did you get that hat for Christmas? I did get this hat. Did you? I got this hat, yeah. What about that tracksuit? No. It's a bit of a rascal. What? It's like, that's like the tracksuit you get. You know when you play in a football team at school? And everyone gets the same tracksuit. That is like that one. This is my gym tracksuit. Is it? Just can't Not worn it very much. That's been worn. <laughs> this is Coon Cassius from Rifle TV in association with MTK Global. I don't know if this is like an end of year review, reflection on the show, a bit of everything. A bit of everything, really? Really, yeah. This is the same room. We borrowed this from Darts. Uh, do you remember when I'd done that? Deontay Wilder yes. thing with the glasses on? With yes. Five pound note. Yeah, that worked well. <laughs> Went well, yeah. Come a long way since then. Um, well, just six days obviously out from mm. your uh, end of year Christmas cracker. Mm. It was a Christmas cracker. Yeah, it was. Mm. Um, I watched, sat down on the Sunday, mm. watched the whole show. Yeah, um, yeah I mean, as brutal knockouts mm. as you can get mm. in heavyweight boxing, that was definitely one of them. Mm. I watched the fight back. I'm not, I'm not, sorry, I'm not quite sure I agree that the actual fight itself was better than the first one. Mm. I thought the first one, I mean, you're not talking a lot in it at all. I suppose it was different things, really. The first fight was an undercard fight, so the atmosphere was better and hotter. I know that doesn't mean the fight was better, but it was a bit more dramatic. With the knockout, it was more dramatic and emphatic. Um, and Dillian came from behind to win, clearly behind. Um, I, th- I thought... I thought, I thought it was a better fight than the first fight, personally. I thought it was more... I thought it was technically a bit better as well. But I thought Chisora boxed technically better. White was more patient than he was in the first fight. Maybe le- made less mistakes, but... Yeah, it was a toss-up, really. But it was one of them where I said to your boy, who'd done the interviews after, because you sent your, your uh, junior, um, I said, when you do a rematch like that, you have to understand, like, can you imagine how... Badly did people want, or not everybody obviously, but a lot of people want that to be shit, that fight. Admit that. Like, people would have loved it to be shit so they can just jump all over it, right? So you make a fight like that and you think, it can't be anything but brilliant. I mean, the first fight was brilliant. They're both probably better. They're both in better shape. There's more on the line. It's sold out. But there's always that worry that it might be shit. And I'll be honest with you, we haven't done a shit pay-per-view since Bell You Cleverly 2. You know? You can look at all the pay-per-views. The only one you could probably call out is the Kelbrook Gavin fight, but you had Selby Gradovich, you had Mitchell Linares. It was an unbelievable night of boxing. So what I'm saying is, no one's moaned after a pay-per-view, really, since Bell You Cleverly. And every time you wait and hope that you don't get a stinker, to be honest. So after that fight, I was so pleased because it was unbelievable. And, you know, everyone that bought it said, no one, you know, not one moan from a customer. And that's the most important thing to us is that everybody watched it, everyone who bought it, everybody who was in the arena left thinking they got value for money and they, they had a smile on their face. And everybody did. There wasn't one person who left or didn't watch who went, fucking, that was shit, didn't get me money. It, that, and that hasn't happened. So every time, that's a big tick on the list. So I was pleased that it was as good as I hoped it would be. Probably better. It exceeded expectations. It's mad how a year and a half ago you were saying that the fight wasn't pay-per-view mm. and you were trying to have to convince Chisora and White that it wasn't the label mm. saying it was. Mm. So It's a little bit of mind games in that. I mean, in that, at the time, it probably wasn't. Because, obviously, Dillian hadn't really had any notable wins. His profile was nowhere near where it is now. And Chisora is now coming off a Takam win on pay-per-view as co-main event. So, and the game's changed completely. So a little bit of me... Listen, I would love to make every fight on Saturday Night Fight Night. Because then you get no moans. But you can't... 
as much as you want to dislike me or boo me, I'm dictated to by the fighters in terms of what they want for the fights. Do you understand? I can't go to Dillian White or Shazora and go, listen, everyone don't really want this on pay-per-view. They want it on Saturday night fight night. Can you take 400 grand for this fight? What do you think they're going to say? You can't be naive enough to think that that's how the game works. So the money that Dillian White wanted for that fight and Chisora, only one way to do it. It's just pleasing when you get a fight and a night like that. And it's not, it's not about me. It's about British boxing. Because when you get a bad night or you get a night that leaves bad taste in someone's mouth, or that, that can sometimes snowball into some downtime or a trough. And we've got to keep the peaks going. Because you get a couple of bad ones, everyone goes, you know what, I've fallen out of love with boxing. But something we've managed to do for the last few years is actually not have any of those and just continuously have good nights. And it's not just us. It's other good nights as well. But at the moment, there is momentum in boxing. Every good night makes the sport bigger. But you're putting on so many shows on mm. now in the year and next year. I mean, you're talking about in excess of nearly 60 shows mm. you're going to be put on, putting on. Chances are you're going to have a few bad ones in there just for... Yeah, but that's like, just... But, but look at... You know, look at the Premier League. You're going to have a few bad games. Of it's just that sport. And not every show, but where it's got a lot tougher now is, is that a, a good example is Saturday Night Fight Night the other week. And I know we lost the Kelly fight, but Brooke against um, Zarefa. Zarefa, Kelly against Avisian, Fowler, uh, Kid Galahad, and John O'Carroll in a final eliminator. That was like the world had ended to some people, you know? It was like, this is a disgrace. The worst show I've ever seen. So that's the bar where we're at now, you know? No one says this about other shows, like in Brentwood Leisure Centre or something like that. But where we're at is that's our bar. So sometimes we're going to do an average show or an average to good show. Just the nature of the beast. But the expectation levels are so high now, and that's good for us because it keeps us on our toes. But when you go into new markets, like I said, when we went to Italy, we did that show out there. Italian boxing fans are like, this is, this is unbelievable. So, but obviously our marketplace and the fans here are used to a certain level now. But they also, what I'm finding now is, is the fans just want the big nights. They don't want the good to average shows. They just want the massive nights. And it's going to get really hard next year because all the money is getting funneled into, you know, if you look at 2018, Bellew Hay 1, uh, sorry, Bellew Hay 2, Bellew Usyk, Joshua against Parker, Joshua against Povetkin, White against Chisora, White against Parker. They were all sold out events. 18,000, 20,000, 70,000, 80,000, plus Warrington Frampton, uh, Warrington Selby. So there's so much money being drawn into the big events that the smaller events or the average events or the good events will suffer because people will go, you know what, I'm going to wait till April 13th for Wembley. Does that make sense? So, but that's the same as everything. If you do an interview with Tyson Fury, People, people want that. They don't want an interview with Joe Blocks. They'll still watch it and he'll do okay numbers, but they want the big, the best every time. And that's what's going to get really interesting in 2019. It's going to be tough. It's going to be a very tough marketplace because you've got us, you've got ITV now, you've got BT, you've got Channel 5. I'm sure there'll be other outlets as well. And only the strong will survive. Only the quality will survive. Let's just go back to... A bit like with what you do. That how many... When you started out, how many YouTube boxing outlets were there? None. In right. this country, none. And how many are there now? About 50. 100. Okay. <laughs> but but, what, but o over time, the quality, the ones that work the hardest, the ones that get it right, are the ones that will survive. And all the others will just fall by the wayside. But you, you have to keep evolving. You can't just sit still. You can't just think that you've got the right model all the time. You can't just think, oh, fuck it, I'm IFL, I'll crack it, I'll just sit down and talk bollocks to anyone and they'll watch. 
I mean, you do take advantage of your viewers, but we're not prepared to do that. What do you mean? What? What do you mean? That's what I'm saying. I take advantage of my viewers? Yeah. In what way? Yeah, I've noticed the way you talk to people online. Very disrespectful sometimes. Like what? Yeah, I'm not going to go into it. No, you but... can go into it. No, Feel but free. I've, I've noticed that, you know, IFL lately, you know, are getting particularly arrogant. IFL or me? You. You are IFL, aren't you? <laughs> I'm not. I will say this, and one thing I've noticed so much. I am the only person, really, from a, well, definitely from a promoter standpoint, where you ask everything that can possibly be asked, and you dig so deep on me, but you won't dig it with other people. Why don't you do that? There are so many questions you could ask other promoters, and, and you know, you know those questions, but you refuse to do it. So why is it that I have to tell you the truth 100% of the time and you have to dig me out time after time, yet you sit down with other promoters and you won't ask the questions that the industry wants you to ask because you're scared? I'm not scared. Um... True though. Will you admit to that? You don't grill other promoters anywhere near. There are so many... And I'm not even going to mention it on here because you'll just cut it out. But you, you know... That's a testament to you, though, isn't it? If what you're saying is right, that you're just still there. Yeah, up, but because up yeah, but you feel like I'll get out of her. Her will fucking her. Her's all, her's all right. <laughs> I have nothing fucking, to get her out. Her'll give you. us what we want. I've, no, but no, you I've ask me questions and you wouldn't you. ask other people. There are other questions you should be asking. I other ask promoters. you stuff that's relevant to you and your business and yeah, your but fire. there are questions you should be asking other promoters and you refuse to do it. I don't know about refuse to do it. Can we? Move you can't on? be bothered with the egg. Can we move on? Do whatever you fucking want. Um, going back to last weekend, mm -hmm. I spoke to Dylan actually this morning. Mm -hmm. He said, "Ask Eddie about a conversation we had a few days before the fight about being him being in you." What does that mean? Oh, mate. What was that? What is that? He asked me, but didn't elaborate. But on I it, can't. So I, don't know. I can't even. I can't. I can't mention it on him. Why? Can't you try and word it in a way? <laughs> so we were having a conversation um, about we were just talking, talking business, just about the show and tidying up bits and pieces. And we sort of we had one of these moments where like he'll he'll say something to me like and I and I have to I'm very passionate about what we do, so I might say to him, "Listen, go fuck yourself," you know. Or so he said something to me, and he said something like. <laughs> Something like, you know, one day, basically, he was referencing that he would do something sexual to me one day, <laughs> just for banter. Do you know what I mean? And I was like, mate, you can't say that. He said, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to do it one day. Just, and I went, you, you would have to kill me first. You understand that, don't you? He went, no, no, you've got to be alive. And this is the kind of conversation we have. I mean... He's done it before. He's done it on your. Uh, he's done it on your. Um, uh, on your interviews, mate. He's all wrong. He's all wrong. But yeah, that's what it was. Just he sp specifically asked me to ask you about that. He's done well, you know. Um, we we got a good relationship. I mean, it's, it's hard because he obviously feels like Joshua is our top dog. And Joshua is the biggest star in world boxing. So obviously, and I'm close with him. And, you know, with Dylan, I've got a lot of respect for Dylan White because he never come through no England GB setup. He didn't win Olympic medals. He didn't get it. So when I first started working with Dylan, he was just looking for a break. Someone to give him a six rounder or an eight rounder, you know? So, and he, he had to come through. And he's made a lot of decisions the right decisions about certain fights for less money than perhaps he'd like and, and look at him now. You know, he's been involved in three pay-per-view fights. One as the B side, if you like, but two as the A side, headlining. He's made a lot of money. He's number one with the WBC, he's number one with the WBO, he's top five with the other governing bodies. So, um, this is my daughter on FaceTime. Um, 
And he's done really, really well. He's done really well. Not a lot of people work harder than him. He's made a lot of money. He's well ranked. He's in a great position. But he does say some disgusting things to me every now and again. And um, that was that was a good example. Which is okay. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of the kind of little few words that him and Joshua had after the fight? I'm surprised Joshua even got up. Really, he was no. Yeah. Well, look, he called him a oh, a lanky piece of shit. Yeah. yeah. So I keep saying, like, jo <laughs> I think people look at Joshua and think that he went to public school or something like a private school, and that he's just like wet behind the ears. He's just like these other guys, and he he wanted you know he bit. He bit. That's why he got up there because he, that's unlike him. You know, Josh. He thought he just chilled out, but he bit. He got called a lanky piece of shit. He bit. So he got up there, and what he was saying was, it didn't go down well because people, the crowd, wanted him to say, "You're next. I'm going to fucking knock you out." But he was being honest. He said, "I want Wilder, and if I can't get Wilder and I can't get Fury, I'll fight you." But that wasn't what the crowd wanted to hear in that moment. In the moment. Yeah. Yeah. And. There's a great chance that fight can get made next. It's a tough fight. It's a tough fight. Dylan is a tough fight for anybody. Outside of the, the, the heavyweight world champions, I believe he's, he's number one. And I believe he can beat Tyson. Who doesn't well. believe that that fight will happen for him next? Dylan. I think there's, there's a lot of... I mean, we've got to do a deal. That's the first thing. And that's not going to be easy. Because Dylan will want certain things. Joshua will want certain things. People around Dillian all want certain things. And maybe the same with Joshua. They don't like each other. But there's a lot of money to be made for both of those in that fight. It's a, it's a really, really good fight. And there will be a conversation that our priority has not changed. Make the Deontay Wilder fight. And I'm not going to go into the conversations that we had because we go backwards. Have you had more conversations? <sighs> not really. I mean, I can't exactly say it looks like they want that fight. But who knows what's going to happen in the next few days. But I've already said to them, in the last 48 hours, we need to get moving. We just need to know, do you want this undisputed fight or not? Or do you, do you, are you even prepared to talk, to talk about the deal? If you're not, it's a shame. We're disappointed. We're gutted. But we have to move on. But it's, it's frustrating because people say, oh, you, you, know, you don't want to fight Wilder. We're, we're there. We're, we're ready to fight Wilder. Um... But, I don't know. And then I don't know, you know, maybe they can't do a deal with Fury for the rematch. Well, if you look at the, the polls, I looked at one the other day. It was, uh, it was like 20,000 votes. It says, who is the best heavyweight in, who do you see as the best heavyweight in the world? It was like 44% Joshua, 40% Tyson Fury, and 6% Deontay Wilder. So, although his profile has risen out of Fury fight, it's actually, if you're Tyson Fury now, what deal do you accept to fight Deontay Wilder? You know, he feels like he won the first fight. He should have won the first fight. I don't know. And then you start thinking, do we just make Joshua against Fury? But also, Joshua White, is a, it's a really good fight. And I've, you know, I've also got a job to deliver... Dylan White a world title shot because he deserves a world title shot. I think we all agree on that, right? Yeah. So he's a Brit. He's with us. He deserves a world title shot. Give him the shot. Is the WBO going to make it mandatory? Not yet. The mandatory won't be due till September, October because it'll right. be 18 months. But he will, I mean, he will be the guy. You've got Alexander Usyk who they could put in as mandatory but, I don't, you know. Mandatory for what? Joshua because he was a super champion. Oh. At cruiserweight, I don't feel that that's the fair thing to do, and I don't think the WBO will go down that route. We're happy for Dillian White to be. I want Dillian White to be the WBO mandatory. He deserves it. So that's the route that we'll be going. And if he doesn't fight him in April, he will be his mandatory anyway in September, October. So, and with but I want I want to give Dillian the shot at the world title because otherwise, yeah. You know, on one hand, you have got people saying. Oh, you're going to put Joshua in with Dillian White. On the other hand, people are saying to me, Hearn, when are you going to give White a shot at the World Heavyweight title? It's like, fucking hell, can't, which one do you want me to do? But our, our focus is 100% the same. Deontay Wilder. That is the first choice. And it's not like, oh, Deontay Wilder's our first choice, and then there's Tyson. It's Deontay Wilder's the first choice, 
And then there's Tyson Fury and Dillian White. Not because they're, they're not great fights, but that's what AJ wants. I'm just telling you what he wants. He wants to be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. And he can only do that by fighting Wilder. I know we're always talking about time scales, is it? but April 13th isn't that far no, away No, we need now, to make it? a decision by the end of June. We need to go on sale first week of Feb. Fair so right. we've, got, we've got four weeks to do a deal. But as it stands today... As weeks. it stands today, I would probably say that judging by the response from the Wilder team, Dillian White is probably the front runner for the next fight. But again, he may turn around and go, yeah, I want, I want X, and then we go, fucking hell. What about Gerald right? Miller? Yeah, he's, he's definitely, I mean, that's a fight for America. Do you know what I mean? On what date? Well, probably May. Okay. Because... And are you convinced that, I'll ask you about Brooke Kahn in mm -hmm. a bit, but are you, that's the alternative fight that you would Probably use for, for there's, there's, other, there's other fights. You know, there's other fights that we're looking at and working on. I what, mean, for Wembley? Mm -hmm. What, aside from Brooke Kahn and anything to do with Joshua? Yes. Okay. Am I wrong in saying that it could be quite optimistic then if it's not? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not one that I would think will do 100,000, but I believe it can do 70,000. Um, Callum Smith? Just keep your fucking nose out. And just <laughs> I'm think. asking. Who so, would it be? <laughs> could be? It could be a number of people. But we've got April the 13th at Wembley, and you only and get you one shot. You won't let no, go. you've got no. one shot at Wembley, on April, and that's the shot for 2019, April 13th. So, um, Joshua is the 100% focus for that date at the moment. It's not, you know, but Brooke Khan would also slot nicely into there. And as would maybe another fight that we're, we're looking at as well. But I still think Joshua will box it. I do. Okay. Um, Brooke Khan. Mm. <laughs> Nothing really. I mean, it's just whether he fights Crawford or Brooke. And I, it could go either way. I think he is torn, really. He wants to fight Brooke, but he loves the opportunity to fight Crawford in America. Um, you met him, though, or did you meet him? No, we spoke on the phone. All right. Um, and we got another call this afternoon. It's a tough one. You know, you've got the lure of Crawford, one of the pound-for-pound -pound best, and you've got one of the biggest British fights in, you know, in history against Brooke and one that people, if he doesn't fight Brooke people in this country would always say you duck kill Brooke if he doesn't fight Crawford no one's going to say anything no one's going to go oh you duck Crawford so I think he should fight Kell Brook. so nothing really significant has happened since kind in of the last week, Brooke's fight no, no. and your, well, your gut feeling with this is what my gut feeling before the Brooke fight was that he wouldn't fight Brooke but my gut feeling now is that he may well. Okay. But so you weren't that optimistic after No, that. I just think that he must look at the Brook fight against the Rafa and go, I can beat Kell Brook and I can stop him. I think that's what's I think that is what Amir believes. Amir believes he will knock out Kell Brook. And he, he really believes that now, after that last fight. Mm. What did you make of these comments? I just think that he he would hate to lose like it would kill him to lose to Kelbrook and actually vice versa they would they would both have unhappy retirements if they lost that fight and that's not a nice thing to have to know that you're going to be sitting on your couch and you're going to be like when you know that'll be it'll be a horrible taste in your mouth that you've lost to him and that has been the thing, in my opinion, holding the fight back. If you lose to Terence Crawford, you lose to Terence Crawford. If you lose to Kelbrook, oh. But that's what makes it such a big fight. That's what makes it so much on the line. The the you know the the fear, the fear of losing to this bloke you can't stand. And I like that. I like that a lot. What do you make of these comments that? Khan came out with the other day about Kel, was he? It's going to get worse. 
Mm. It's going to be all sorts flying around if the fight gets made because they're both incapable of holding their tongue. They're both... When you... When you're so... Uh, when something deep... When you're... When it bothers you emotionally so much, you say erratic things, you say... You know, you say things you shouldn't. You can tell people getting irate and the way they're talking. And... Oh, oh, and that's where you're at with those guys. So when they come together in a room, I mean, I just want, I just want a press conference. I just want a face to face with them two. You know, because it's going to get nasty. No, and I'm not even talking about physically. I believe it will get physically nasty as well. But it's going to be horrible. It's gonna, yeah, it will yeah. be spiteful. There'll be yeah. things said that you really shouldn't say to another man, but they will be said, and that's that's hype. That's a build up. You know, and we live for that shit, really. And you, you're sitting there now. Look, you got all dribble coming out your mouth. You're thinking about the foot first Brook Khan press conference. Let's just fucking make it happen. Get in a ring and go set, find out. We'll do one, two, three. Don't matter. But if you don't take the fire, you will always be referred to as the wider British public as the guy that ducked him. What's your time scale? I'm going to keep asking uh, you about what's your same, time scale. Same, it's, really. It's got to be announced. But there'll be a decision much quicker on that. Yeah. I thought it would become by the end of this week. It won't be, but it's, you know. Is there any issue from Brooke's side about this or not really? It's whether Khan yeah, takes I mean, Brooke, which Brooke, fight. Yeah, Brooke, we've still got to finalise a deal with Kel that he's happy with and we're on the way to doing that. But this is more about which fight Amir will take. You know, there's more money in the Brook fight than the, the Crawford fight. Um, it's an easier fight. It's it's the fight that his country won. So give it to him. Just going back to the show at the O2. Mm -hmm. Looking back on it, what do you make of the, the price and little stoppage? Was it fair? Do you know, when I watched it live, as I do, from here to you, I thought it was a very fair stoppage. When I watched it back, I thought it was a really poor stoppage, to be honest. He got hit on the top of the head and his legs had gone completely. Um, basically, I think that the referee saved him from being knocked out. But, also... He didn't give him an opportunity to try and recover. I don't think he would have recovered. And I spoke to Tom, you know, I said to him, he said, Oh, you know, should now I said, Tom, I've got to be honest with you, I think that stoppage saved you. Because I think you'd blown your tank in terms of the opportunity to beat Price. He was gathering a bit of confidence, and I think you were gonna get stopped properly. But But don't they want that? Who? Doesn't Tom Little, I mean, I've spoken to him. Yeah, he can say, day, I mean, but any fighter can say, and any fighter will say, I would rather you carried me out of a ring unconscious. But we have to weigh up the fact that I believe he was about to get hurt. He would say, let me get hurt then. But it's easy being barbaric sitting there watching. The truth is, what do the fans want to see? The fans want to see a knockout. The fans want to see Tom Little out on the canvas. I don't. Do you? No. I know. No, not at all. But at the same time, you have to, in an opportunity like that, you have to give the guy, and he was protecting himself, you know? And I felt it was a poor stoppage. I've got sent something today for you. From Tom Little. From Tom Little. So, where is he? Is it a video? Yeah. So, I'll play it. On Go here, on. just press play and watch that. Still got a black eye. Hello, Eddie. Hope you had a Merry Christmas. Me and the little in here is just off down to the job centre. And I'm in the food bank. Um, because we really don't know what else we're going to do now. So, um, if you have any spaces on your show, please.
he's a friendly bastard. I quite rate Tom Little. I think he's a good fighter. Um, I've got him a fight, pretty much, on one of our Italian shows. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm working on. Um, so hopefully getting that in February or March next year. Mm. I mean, they pretty much dismissed the rematch. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I, mean, I want to box price, price. Yeah, yeah Price wants I think to that Price... On. Price and who? I don't know. I mean, I like Price against Lucas Brown. I feel like Price needs one more significant international step up and then throw him in the deep end. I know a lot Price of people. I know, what about yeah, Price Chisora, Price, Price Takan. Mm. I mean, I know a lot of people have given up on David Price, but one, one, I find, and and I don't mean this disrespectfully, disrespectfully to Pricey, I think he's fucking entertaining because he's probably the hardest puncher in the division, and he's also susceptible to being knocked spark out. I mean. Everyone loves watching Price because he hits so hard and he has been sensationally KO'd and can be at any moment. That's not the best for a fighter, but from a from a selfish point of view, I love having him on my shows because he's entertaining. From a personal point of view, I also like having him on my shows because I think he's a really nice bloke and I think he's an honest pro. So I like giving him the opportunities and I just feel like if he could just get on a little bit of a run... He may do something, but he's always one defeat away or one KO away from saying, that's your lot. But the problem is, when you get knocked out by Povetkin, and he, he, he said it well in the press conference, if he got knocked out by Tom Little, that's it, he's done, you know? And even against Kuzmin, he retired because he was fucked, basically. But he got knocked out by Povetkin, who is top five heavyweight in the world, in my opinion. So, so what? And we got a big Liverpool show March 30th, and I want him to be on there, and I want him to be in a good fight. And, you know, the division is fascinating, and you're only ever one big win away from something major. I mean, I, I'd like to see Fury against Price. Does that fight make sense for Tyson? No, no not at the moment, but I'm just saying that... It's I'm a fight not, we, did, we should have saw. I know, but I'm not saying now, I'm just didn't. saying, say he went in with Takam, or say he went in with, I don't know, Parker, or so, and beat one of those guys. I just think that certain styles are, are going to suit him, certain styles aren't. But I just, I just enjoy, call me mad, call me deluded, I enjoy watching Price fight. Do you? Yeah. I do. You, and I you, think you're right in, what you're in Liverpool, let's put him on that card. It's going to be a great card on the 30th. Let's give him a good fight and let's see what can happen. He deserves it, you know. I mean, look, he jumped in against Povetki and he jumped in against Kuzmin at late, late notice. So, you know. Have you got anything kind of with Shizora now? I know he's kind of with Hay, but yeah. have you got no? any obligation no. to do no. anything with Shizora? But if he, he obviously well, yeah, I'd yeah, love, I mean, back on yeah, the, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because people say, "Oh, he should retire now," and yet others say, "Well, hang on a minute, he was winning the fight against Dillian White going into the eleventh round. Maybe there's more to come." It was a bad knockout, but again, you know, from from a, a business point of view, Chisora's always in great fights. He's highly entertaining, and people like him a lot. And from a personal point of view, I like Derek a lot. I have a lot of respect for him. I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, Dylan the same. Dylan probably, you know, like he said, the things that he wants to do to me and all that sort of stuff. But he probably doesn't know it as much as... or at all. But I'm behind these guys. I'm, I've got his back. You know, I'm fighting for these guys and I want to deliver for these guys. And Chisora... The same, you know, when he got the Takam fight, when when he knocked Takam out, huh, see my celebration. It ain't fake. Like, it doesn't he could have fucked off and done the same with someone else. I was pleased for him, you know? Because I like Chisora and he's fucking murder to deal with. Murder. But I like him a lot and I have a huge amount of respect for him. And it's the same pricey. So certain fight and certain fighters 
that you want to see him do well. And it ain't really about the money or the future. It's just that moment in time. I'm pleased for you. And I was pleased for Pricey. I was actually a bit disappointed for Pricey that it was a bit like, oh, because he wanted that thrill of winning. And I feel as though it was taken away from him a little bit. You know? So, but we'll see what he does on March the 30th. What about the real number one heavyweight in the world? Who's that one? The White Rhino. The White Rhino, I mean, he's... The original plan is to do White Rhino against Lucas Brown, April 13th at Wembley. But? Nothing but. But Price would like to fight him. And, but I still, I want to deliver that. He texted me the other day, White Rhino. He says, I want Brown, Takam, Price, or Chisora. Do you know what would have been interesting if Dave had thought that Gashi, who Tech had fought? That would have been interesting. He He's a handful, mate. Mate, that Gashi is a fucking tough bastard. And the worst thing is, I feel bad because he kept looking at me, Gashi. Obviously, he took the fight on like three or four days' notice. And he kept looking at me as if to say, have you had enough now? I'm thinking, oh, about me? Have you had enough? So I was like encouraging him to keep going because he was having success in the fight as well. And he kept going. In the end, he got chinned. He was fine. But I felt a bit bad because I was almost encouraging him on. And he was like trying to impress us to get another shot. And hand on heart, he's 100% getting another shot with us, mate, because he's fucking great. Gashy, he's a fucking lunatic. He's tough, mate. With a proper camp in him, he is a handful. So yeah, we were going to make Dave Allen against Gashi. Yeah, that would have been a tough night's work. That was the original opponent for the, the Newcastle. Castle, yeah. 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 But I like Sanna Gashi. A nice man. Fucking tough. Tough. Are you going to do anything more with Takam? Or... Yeah. Yeah. So Takam's... I mean, when you look at the, the fighters that we're working with in a heavyweight division, some under contract, some fight by fight, Anthony Joshua, Dillian White, Gerald Miller... Derek Chisora, Alexander Povetkin, Joseph Parker, um, Dave Allen, David Price, Senad Gashi, Carlos Takam. So, fucking loads of them. And, and we'd like to stick some of those in with each other, aren't they? Povetkin against Parker. Povetkin against Dave Allen. Parker against Chisora. Parker against Allen. Gashi against Price. Gerald Miller against Dillian White. I mean, that's a big fight. Dillian White against Jarrell Miller. Big fight. Actually, in an ideal world, I'd like to go Joshua Wilder, White against Miller. Same night. Oh, yeah. Steady. What? Same night? Yeah. You're about the fans. Am I? Again, it doesn't matter if I'm about the fans or not. I can't, I, I don't make the decisions. I don't dictate what a fighter wants, money-wise. How many pay-per-views do you think you'll have next year in this country? Five. She had six this year, yeah? Did we, yeah. So we had Joshua Parker, Joshua Povetkin, White Parker, White Chisora, Bellew Usyk, and Bellew Hay. Yeah, six. Six. So... We're going to start a little bit later. We... Normally, we'd do a pay-per-view in February or March, but I, I think our first one will be April. You've got Eubank the Gal, Feb 23rd. That's an ITV pay-per-view. And then we'll probably go April, probably with the first one, mm. unless something pops up in March, but I, I don't think so. So we'll probably go April, May, June, September. Could be four. It's not... Again, it's not like you... Sky say to us, we want six pay-per-views, we want five, it's just, it's case by case. When the fight's yeah. going on. Could be three. <clears throat> I hope not. Um, what did you make of the, the Buwaxi win? Because it's, it's, are you talking about the stoppage? Well, just the fact of the, the punch before. Yeah, it was, I mean, they were in a clinch and they were trading mm. when the ref said stop, stop boxing. So it's hard to just, you know. Yeah. And he's a fucking animal. <laughs> How many, did he go, how many rounds did he do with Eubank? Who? Quinnan. Did it go in ten? distance? No, nine or ten. Oh, like okay. um, but when Boetsy starts unloading, mate, 
He's an animal. Mm. He's an animal. I so want him to fight Yard. He's such a good fighter. And a m big fighter. And I said to Yard on the night, and again, like I know that I like Yard. I think he's great for boxing. I think he looks the part. He's a good fighter. I, I don't know him personally, but I like his swag. I like, I just, but I just, I just believe that Boatsy is just on another, and it's not just about being on another level to, to Yard. He's just on another level full stop. So what I'm saying is, is in that, I'm saying, okay, we've got a situation here. Boatsy is a bit of a BT, Frank Warren, sort of like one of the diamonds or main guys. So is Boatsy for us. So let's not deprive them of an opportunity. I mean, all this stuff, yeah, we can do it on Sky, we can do it on... Here's another example. You can't say that for one fight, like Fury and, and, and not say that for another fight. So Callum Johnson looks to be getting a big fight in the U US. The board have told us, and we have said to the board, please make Boatsy against Yard for the British title. But currently, it's Johnson and Boatsy. Correct. Which is not going to happen. Well, there's a fight for Callum in the States, which is good money, Monaghan, great opportunity. What you said? Yeah, surely yeah. Monaghan. To, to get himself in a great position in New York. And I think that's a great fight for him. So Not not on the bill you've got coming up. No, no, no. February. Right. right. So if that happens, which is likely, the board will order Boatsy against Yard unless they're told by Yard's camp not to put them forward for that fight. Right. So I just went up to Yard, he was at the O2 show, and I said, mate, please don't pull out of that fight. Because we're not, we're not going to agree a deal. Let it go out of purse bids. They're both going to make a fortune for that fight because you'll have Sky and BT bidding and you have my word, we will not pull Boatsy out of that fight. What, if you lost the purse Correct. bid? Correct. Okay. So if we lose the purse bid, good luck to Boatsy. He's going to make a fortune. And it's a great fight. If, for example, an opportunity came up for like a Baturbiev, mm -hmm. for Boatsy, mm -hmm. like that happened with Johnson, would you stick Boatsy in? Not yet, No. No. Okay. Because he's done, his last three fights have gone three rounds. Yeah, he's never been past the what the sixth, I think. So he needs a couple of those. You know, Callum had the Frank Buglioni fight. I know that only went around, but still, Callum went uh, ten or eleven rounds for the Commonwealth title in a, in a tough fight. And I just think Boatsy needs. I, I I believe Boatsy can beat Better Beer now, but it's a fucking. It's one of them. Because we just don't know, do it, and I'm not going to do one of them at the moment with what I believe could be one of the next great British stars of boxing in Boatsy. We've just got to get it right. Mm. So, and everybody's a different different circumstance, you know, in terms of putting fighters in fights. I just think the yard fight is a brilliant all British fight, brilliant fight, and and it's a tough fight. I'm not saying mm. Boatsy, you know, Boatsy strolls through him, but I just think Boatsy's on fucking honestly. Gutted that Bullioni retired. Mm. I know, obviously, what happened in Monaco and that, mm. but Bullioni again. There was some fights there that. But he I think we need. I mean, look, Yard, Yard should have boxed Burton. That's the truth of it, right? Because you can't sit there. I mean, I saw his interview when he said, "Who knows Jose Burton?" And you, for once, actually asked us. So, well, who knows the geezer you just boxed? He said, "Well, outside of Britain, you know, he's known in." Argentina, I'm like, whoa, who's feeding you this? Because the truth is, is it, Yard would be a favourite against Burton. So if you're fighting guys no one's ever heard of, why wouldn't you fight Burton, who your whole country has heard of? Actually a fight that people could get excited about. But a lot of these fighters get told things, and they just, oh, and Billy Joe's another, I'll come back on a Billy Joe thing uh, in a minute, but... I just sometimes listen to them things like, who is filling you with that bullshit? So Yard's in a position where he's what, he's number three in the world with the WBO or something? Yet he's not going to take a world class fight. So you might as well take a domestic fight if you're not going to. He's kind of stuck in the middle. But we'll see what happens. Maybe his team don't want to fight Boatsy. I, I, I wouldn't blame him. But that for me is a brilliant fight and they both make a lot of money. And it's a big all British fight, and Boatsy's ready. He's ready to take that fight next, no problem. What about Billy Joe? Um, I just watched his interview last night. I mean, 
it just baffles me sometimes. And again, you know how I feel about Billy Joe and I like him a lot, but what? It's like, yeah, you know, well, Eddie Hearn and yeah, he don't like Frank Warren. What the fuck's that got to do with it? You failed a VADA test. Yeah, but it was, I, I didn't do anything wrong with the British Boxing Board of Control. It's irrelevant. You signed up for a VADA test. You failed a VADA test. It's not, I didn't say one word to the Boston of the Massachusetts Commission. I didn't have any influence, negative or positive. I let them get on with it. And the truth is, they couldn't license him. He just failed a VADA test. I feel sorry for him. And I 100% believe Billy Joe that he didn't knowingly take performance enhancing drugs. I believe that. Because I don't think he's that kind of person. I think, and a lot of what he says in the interview, which is, if you beat me, I'll shake your hand fair and square. And I believe Billy Joe is a stand-up person in that respect. But where do you draw the line? Someone fails a drugs test, they fail a drugs test. You can't start saying, oh yeah, but you know, I was... I had this, uh, you know, I was tired and, you know, I had blocked up. Like, like, it doesn't matter, mate. It doesn't matter whether you were cheating, not cheating. You you failed. So, you know, when he says, I asked to be signed up to the uh, um, Lemieux fight, I asked to be signed up to the Willie Monroe fight, I believe him. I believe he wants VADA testing. But you can't sign up for VADA testing, fail, and then go... Oh yeah, but hang on. Uh, I passed one a couple of days later, and and Eddie Earn uh, didn't book a flight for me, and yeah. You know, so, but what do you think the WBO will do with this with Billy Joe? Do you think they will make him mandatory for Andrade? I, I don't so? know. I'm happy for that. Why don't you just make the fight? You like the fight? We can make you? that fight, but it won't get made because you've gone from he was going to make millions of dollars mm. to he's going to make nowhere near that. I don't know, but. Um, so the only way the fight really happens is, is if they make No, they we can make, make the mentor. fight. We can make the fight anyway. But I just, you know, again, like I haven't seen his dad's interview that he did. But it's like, well, it's Eddie Earn's fault. How the fuck do you... How is it Eddie Earn's fault? What did I do? Come and stick this thing up your nose, squirt it and go, ha ha. No, you failed a VADA test. If Andrade failed a VADA test, he'd be out. It doesn't matter whether he's promoted by Eddie Hearn, fucking... Sid's not whoever. You can't you can't blame other people. How I've ended up getting a blame for this is absolutely beyond me. This is on another level. It's like, well, it's Eddie Earn, wasn't it? How? Well, you stopped that fight. No, no, no. You failed a VADA drugs test and it got put before the commission who refused to license you. I, it, it's so straightforward. That, but I will stress again, I believe Billy Joe. I do. And I think he's been unlucky, but you are responsible for what you put in your body. Which he did say. Yeah, no, he said yeah, it, you know. So. But you can't. There's no one else to blame. There's one person to blame in this Billy Joe Saunders. And, mate, it's really harsh and it's tough. But who else? You know, what do you want to start doing? Blaming his trainer? Blaming his coaching mates, blaming some other bloke who told him it was right to say, where does it stop? You know, but you are responsible, no one else. But also, I would also like to say, do you think, you you know me, right? What, and it was a big fight for design, right? What fight do you think I would have preferred on that night? Honestly, yeah, and I'm, it wouldn't, yeah, no, no, right, let me tell you no, one I'm, thing, I'm, let me tell you one thing. Yeah. Financially, it didn't change one thing for me because the yeah. zone were paying for it. People, the, the funny thing was people think, oh, Hearn saved himself a couple of quid. The zone pay for those purses, right? It makes right? no difference to you financially no, whatsoever. No, I didn't make Billy one Joe, dollar yeah. more. Now, you can say, yeah, but you had more chance of, of having a world check. Mate, maybe, you maybe. Know, no, you know right. me, right? What fight would I have preferred no, you, to see? No, I, yes, I, it, I would say that you would have preferred Andrade to fight Saunders, definitely. Yeah. But there is that element of... Not that you've had a touch with Andrade, but... but... But you still get people saying now, well, he's not really a real world champ. I don't want that. I would have rather he boxed Billy Joe. One, it was great for zone. Two, it would have been a really good fight. And three, if Andrade would have won, which I believe he could have done and would have done, then we've got a real asset. It, honestly, 
you think that I would have I preferred Andrade against Calton Dokwa than Andrade against Billy Joe Saunders? This was a fight that I was fucking horny for. You know? So for people to say, oh, it was Ernst, wasn't it? Ernst done that. <laughs> fucking hell. That's unbelievable. What is the situation? Obviously, what do you want to do with Andrade? He's got Akavov, obviously. Yeah. On I the... want him to go. I want him to go into big unification fights, but we know the division is somewhat consolidated with two champions, three champions: Andrade, Canelo, and Danny Jacobs. Hundred percent. We want Danny Jacobs against Canelo on May fourth. I believe the zone want that. Do you believe that will happen? We got to do a deal, but I think that there's enough. Has Andrade been mentioned for Canelo? No, 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 not yet. So, but he's probably two fights away from fighting those guys, in my opinion. I want to get him active again. So he'll fight January the 18th. Then there'll probably be a mandatory on him. But there Who's, will be. I don't be? know. No. Again, again, I'm not the WBO. So, like, Frank Warren has had a golden relationship with the WBO for 20 years, yeah? All of a sudden, I come in and apparently... I control the WBO. I mean, it's absolutely ridiculous. So, I don't know. Like People say, well, who's your manager going to be? I don't know. I'm presuming it's going to be Billy Joe Saunders. But he has only fought once against Charles Adamu, and he weighed 180 pounds. You can't tell from the rankings, then, who they could install as the, no. the mandatory. No. But obviously, it's Billy Joe Saunders. I don't, even know, where, I don't even know sort of where Billy Joe's ranked, to be honest with you. I mean, if you take it from a rankings point of view, this is great TV. So, yeah. if you take it from a rankings point of view, Number one is David Lemieux. Right? Okay. Now, he failed to make weight the other day, obviously, pulled out the day before. Yeah. Number two is Jack Colkai. Yeah. Number three is Stephen Butler. Billy Joe's not even ranked because he's banned. He's got six months. Six months. With the WBO. Yeah. Doesn't stop him from fighting, but within their ranking. So I think yeah. that they'll order a mandatory in January. Oh, straight after the fight. So I don't even think it can be Billy Joe, personally. But just do me a favour, when it's not if it's not Billy Joe, can you not blame me? <laughs> the mandatory is David fucking Hearn again. Can't believe it. Okay. Moving away from this, what a moment for Charlie Edwards. Yes, unbelievable. Becoming a WBC flyweight champion. Mm. I mean, the, the scenes afterwards yeah. in the dressing room was, were incredible. Yeah. But um, yeah, Charlie Edwards, who obviously had that Casimiro mm. fight, how mm. many years ago now? Three years ago? It's on a Brooke Golovkin card. Right, mm. two, three years ago. Um, just kind of kept on the down low yeah. a little bit, Charlie Edwards. Yeah, a lot, a lot of these fighters um, stay really patient. And a lot of the times, you get to a stage where you think, fuck, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is me, by the way, not the fighters. And I got that with Bellew before I got the Makabu shot. But I, I tried absolutely everything. And you get to a stage where you think, fuck. And you find, Look, I'll get you, don't worry, don't worry. Rocky Fielding was a bit like that before the Zoiga fight. You know, you're trying so hard... All these doors are closing on you and you, you're looking at the landscape thinking, what am I going to do? And it was the same with Charlie. Cal didn't want to fight him. And then I'm thinking, fuck. And then we start looking at the flyweights. He's already moved up to super flyweight. We had uh, Muthalembe, who's an IBF champion, flyweight champion. Do we, they want that fight? No, well, they want it now. We was up fighting and made them an offer. said, no, we don't want to fight Charlie Edwards. Mm -hmm. Fuck. Then I offered... Uh, the kid um, who he beat, uh, Rosales, the fight, he wanted too much money. And in the end, like, I just thought, you know what? Just give it to him. Because 
Charlie needs a shot. And I can't, you know, to put him in another WBA Intercontinental fight or WBC, I've got to put him in. So we paid up and he, he delivered. And I'm so pleased for him because that everyone knows his mum's not well and stuff like that, but the personal sacrifice that he's put into boxing and he works harder than, it's hard because there's so many people work so hard in boxing, but I, I'm a, I genuinely believe that if you put that kind of work in and, hello, if you put that kind of work in, you will, you will be rewarded. Sports, a brutal place in that. A lot of things in life, you can put the hard work in and you know that if you put that work in, you've got to get the rubber to green, but you, you, it, it will pay off for you. I mean, look at you. Zero fucking talent, but you've put the work in. Yeah? So there's a great example out there to people. You can be talentless. Yeah? But if you put the work in, this, you're a shining light of example. But with, with sport... What? 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 Sorry, just remind me what your... Like, yeah. Remind me what your no, talent is again. Talent. My talent yeah. is I have great business acumen. But I'm, I'm actually the same as you. Right? I'm not the most talented. I'm not the cleverest person you ever meet. But I, will, I refuse to be outworked. There's no excuse for that. You will not outwork me. You know, I, I would promise have, you. I, and you're the same. Yeah, I would have interviewed you on Christmas Day if you did. Yeah, but you're the same. You won't be outworked. They're very, those people are very hard to beat. And that substitute, sometimes ability is substituted by hard work. And that's probably, we're in the same bracket. But in sport, it don't work like that. You know, you can't just say, I work harder than everybody else. If you're not good enough, mate, you ain't good enough. But once you get quality and you get ability with hard work, it's tough to beat. And Charlie works so hard, he, he's, he's absolute life. You know what? It's really nice. I mean, I'm going to have to warn him about milking it too much, but it's really nice to just open up social media and see the smile on his face. You know? He's, his life is complete, really. You understand? Like, you know what boxing means to Charlie Edwards. He can sit there with that on his wall. He's a WBC champion of the world. Fuck the money. Fuck everything. He could live in a fucking tent as long as that belt's with him in the wall, mate, that moment, you imagine you've worked all your life. We don't really, normal people don't really get to that point, do we? What is that point? Is it 20 million views? Or however many you've done? Is it selling... Wembley at? Yeah, but same thing. No, but is it doing an, a unit of undisputed fight at Wembley? No, because it's never ending, isn't it? But that's the ultimate, that's the pinnacle. And I can't tell you how rewarding it is to be... I mean, my old man was in bits. He was, like, crying his eyes out. And Charlie Edwards is, like, his new favourite because he went in the change room. Obviously, he's presented his mum with the bell, and it's very, very sad. But I can't tell you how rewarding it is to see someone achieve so much happiness in their life, you know? Because money's money, and... We have to make him as much money as we can now because I want to give him the best life financially that we can. But you can have as much money as you want, mate. If you ain't happy with the skin you're in and you ain't happy inside yourself, you're the, you're the fucking poorest man in the world. And he now has got that feeling inside him for life. And that's really nice to know. I know that when Charlie retires from the sport of boxing, whatever happens from now, he will be a happy man. But now, let's see how far we can go. Let's see how much money we can bank him. And I know people find it boring talking about that. I don't give a fuck. That's my job. Right? He ain't earned a lot of money. He's a flyweight. But let's make sure he maintains his position. Looks at unifications. Maybe steps up and fights cow. I don't know. But it is... I can't tell you how rewarding it is just to see that young man with that feeling of total happiness and completeness that you can't, you can't buy, you can't, it's something completely within that 
99% of us in the world search for, don't we? That feeling of, oh, I've done it. My life is the bollocks. And when have you done that in your life? I ain't done it yet. I feel like I've got a great life. I'm happy, but when can you honestly sit back and say, We well, should do last that. Last night. <laughs> With what? I don't know about your private life. But it's like, we should do it, shouldn't we? Because we we should all sit back with our families and go, look at this. But we all, we're all, you're always striving, aren't you? To, to get to where you want to be, to achieve more, to be happy. And he's got that feeling. And he could sat back that night and said, I know it's a little bit dour, but... If the good Lord took me now, you know, I've done it. And that feeling, you can't buy. You can't buy. Total feeling of happiness and uh, completeness, fulfilment. And we should probably all lower our expectations in terms of that feeling because sometimes you strive too much for that feeling. You forget what you have got. You know? It's true. Where really you should sit around with your missus and kids and go, I'm fucking complete. Look at my, look, this is it, mate. But sometimes we forget the important things to strive for success and personal goals rather than looking back at the bigger picture and saying, mate, you are complete. You are fulfilled. Look at your life. But how far can we push it? That's a problem. But that's a problem with life. And that's something you have to be very careful of. And I'm very mindful of that as well. Because you can be so goal orientated that you forget about the important things in your life, you forget about the important people in your life, you make sacrifices that are going to um, sacrifice time with your family or you know your ability to just communicate with people. You know what I mean? And that's what you got to be given. But he was he was so personally driven. But he's probably done all that. He's made all those sacrifices. But he's got there. He's got to the chosen land. But I think that we all need to make sure that we don't lose sight of life. What, what's it? What you know? Yeah, I want to do this. I want to do sixty shows next year. I want to be number one promoter. I want to build a family business here. I'm, whoa, whoa, hang on a minute, mate. What about making sure that you, your kids, are happy, your missus is happy. You watch them grow up. You, you form that special bond without just being 100% goal oriented but at the same time you've got to be selfish to be successful you can't do what you do and I can't do what I do without it jeopardising personal time and he and Charlie the same but you have to be selfish but you mustn't lose sight of of life and what it's all about because I swear to you you will sit there one day and I will probably do the same even now without even taking this all on and go I should have probably spent a bit more time with my kids or should have probably talked to my mum a little bit more or you know what my granddad he's 91 I should pop around there a little bit more you know but you don't you, you life is just Oh, it's a rat race you know but it's not it's not about and I think a lot of the time it's not really about money it's about goals not wanting to be beaten the competitive instinct how far you can take the company how much you can grow that's the challenge to me for me it's a personal thing because it's a family business and it's something that I'm very proud of and I refuse to be beaten but at what point do you go, do you know what? That's why I always feel that I'll probably walk away from boxing. Don't get too excited, not yet. But I ain't going to, I'm not, listen, I ain't Bob Aaron. You won't see me 87. Imagine, I mean, we'll probably do an interview when I'm 87. Because I just think, it, it's not, it's the most captivating, bizarre, a dramatic job you could ever have being a boxing promoter. But 
it deprives you of so many things. So how long are you prepared to be deprived for? You know, we always have this conversation, oh, so I don't know, three years, five years, who knows? That was five years ago. So, I don't know. I'm not going anywhere for five years or longer, but at some point, you've got to enjoy yourself. You ain't got, you know, you can't take your after boy in this game. You can't go on holiday for two weeks with your kids and just, the same with you, and just think, oh, you know what, fuck that, I'll turn my phone off. It's impossible. You turn it back on, He's signed with someone else. The bloke you've just signed over there is fucking taking another fight. He's done that. It's like, so, but don't get me wrong, it's the most addictive thing in the world. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be doing it. But, this has gone really deep now. But we all must remember, what is life? Life is over, before you know it. You've always got to think about what you'd think when you know the end is coming. That's what I think. And you've got to say to yourself, what would I be thinking? It's pretty obvious what you'd be thinking, wouldn't it? Why did I fucking do so many interviews with Cousin Gatsis? How many hours have we spent doing interviews? <clears throat> I don't know, a fucking lot. Anyway, um, that's my deepness for the day. I'm okay. I like a bit of any home deepness. No, but I just, hot, mate. That's for another reason. Didn't like them, <laughs> no, but I just think I just think that you know you get wrapped, so wrapped up with things, don't you? So Charlie Edwards, that's the feeling I got for Charlie Edwards. I'm jealous that one day when it's all said and done, he will look back and he'll go, "Fucking did it." Like Darren Barker does now. Same thing. Mm. Can you just touch on the rest of the show before mm -hmm. we kind of? Uh, so we've done, we've done duets. Yeah, Belotti. You know, Reese Bellotti. Reese Bellotti had a job as an electrical engineer. I mean, I, he'll probably have a, have a go at me for saying that. He, he, he was extremely senior, very bright individual on film sets, okay? And he was on really good money, really good money. And he's fully qualified. He can walk back into that job tomorrow. But he won two ABA championships. And he, he comes to see me, he says, look, I want to turn pro, but I'm making good money. I said, Reese, if you don't do this, you will never know what might have been. Same kind of thing. You'll sit back one day on your deathbed and go, fucking should have turned pro, you know? Fuck the films and being an engineer. So he did it. And he got to, what, 10, 11 and 0. Then he won a WBC International. Then he won the Commonwealth title, beating Jason Cunningham. Great night, and then he lost to Ryan Dorr. And I think that he just got carried away a little bit with the fact that he was bomber Bellotti, he was a massive puncher, he could walk through people. Then he came back with a win at the Copper Box, and then he boxed Ryan Dorr. Uh, sorry, Ryan Walsh, who is really a European level fighter, to be honest with you. Might even be fringe world level fighter. And Reese did really well. He lost by four rounds, I thought. Um, but wasn't good enough. Wasn't good enough for Ryan Walsh. And Reese now has to look at his future and say, look, I've done absolutely everything I can. I've got some great memories. I've won Commonwealth title. I lost for the British title. I, I haven't spoken to him since, but I think he may walk away from the sport. I'd support him whatever he wants to do. But I just feel that he's, he's achieved a lot in his boxing career and he's got that other life that he can go back to. You know, he's got a lovely missus, he's got a beautiful son. So, and he's, he, he's been involved in some big nights. So, we'll have to see what Reese wants to do. For Ryan Walsh, I'd like to see him get a big fight, to be honest. I'd even like the, the Jordan Gill fight, but I feel like Walsh wants to move on to European or world-level world, world level fights. He's getting on himself. Um, who else was on the card? Oh, Fabio Wardley. Everywhere. Yeah, really liked him. Really liked him. I mean, he was on early. Um, he was sparring with Dylan, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, really yeah. exciting young heavyweight. And obviously, Takam. Good fight. I mean, for three rounds, it was a fucking stinker. And then they just started going toe to toe. And um, good win for Takam. Listen, he's got a future. He's got a future. Uh, but all in all, really good show. 
How many really bites? Say. I'm not going to tell you that. But it was solid. It was solid. Was it more than <coughs> Bailey Cleverly? Yes. Do you even know what that done? Yeah. What? Yeah. No, it was, it was strong. It was strong. Was it... <laughs> <laughs> Was it what? What? Well, well, because I'm not. It's not my place to say numbers, but I can. You know, um, go on. What? Possibly. What? You're not happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy. I'm. 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 I'm very happy. Um, we the, we what, definitely. What, we, did the, what did the Parker thing do? Just. Was that was that the same, or was it less? Less. Oh, okay. But this was more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. More. But we were up at look. I mean, we listen. The clash. By the way, I think the clash. Done. Done. What are we going to say? Done. No, say? I think it worked. I I think it got Frank a lot of publicity, and it wasn't ideal for anyone. We, like I said, I reckon we lost thirty thousand buys. To that fight, something like that. How are you coming up with that? Because it's probably. I just because I know the number that we did was probably thirty thousand less than I hoped it would do, and I think it would have done if there was no clash. I, I'm pretty. They were both great fights. They were both. Yeah, Frampton I haven't seen. Warrington I've seen the highlights. Fight. Frampton Warrington looked yeah. brilliant. They were both. It was a big win for British boxing, and by the way, there's going to be clashes all the time. Right, first clash of the year. Let's get his ever. Frank Warren is doing a show on February 23rd and so are ITV with Eubank the Gal. There's a clash. And I'm not involved in the clash. Are we going to see this over the papers? Are we going to see this over... It is my fault. <laughs> but there's going to be clashes. So... Hey-ho. Look, yeah. yeah. But, look, let's take the positives. The positives were we've done a load of buyers. I'm sure they did a load of buyers as well. We had a sold-out arena. 19,000... I know they didn't set out, they done a really good crowd. Both brilliant fights. Everyone that went to that fight had an amazing time. Everyone that watched on TV got value for money. Everyone who went to the O2 had an amazing time. Everyone that watched on TV got value for money. Win-win. Win-win. But, as I always said, it's never ideal to clash. This is two pay-per-view shows. Yeah, it's unusual. First time ever? Two... In Britain, I believe. In Britain, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I don't think you're going to see loads of pay-per-view clashes. I think you're going to see loads yeah, of Saturday of night. Yeah, of course yeah. you are. Um, have we missed out any of your fighters? I'm not saying we're specifically going to go through what, everyone. from that show? No, I think that shows you pretty no, much... No, I mean, look, we've got loads of fighters to talk about. But I just feel that 2019 is the year where... The transition takes place between the guys who are in the final stages of their career. We've had this conversation before. Amir Khan, Kelbrook, even Kroller. I mean, these aren't guys that their career's over, by the way, but they're in the last... What's happened with Kroller and Kroller's Lomba? mandatory to Lomachenko. So there'll be negotiations now, which haven't been exactly fluent, and then there'll be a purse bid, probably. Or we can agree a deal. But, you know, those guys, Quig, you know, the guys who used to headline on Saturday night, fight night, are coming towards the final stages of their career. It doesn't mean they won't headline again, but it's time for the new kids to come through and step up into those positions. You saw Ritson do that. He lost. So he'll come back. Josh Kelly, Ted Cheeseman, Buatzi. These are guys who need to start headlining, you know, a Coley in big fights. Uh, Fowler, Fitzgerald. But these are going to be having big fights on your Yeah, and these are, these, these are the guys, particularly Cheeseman, Boazzi and Kelly, who need to step up to headline now on Saturday Night Fight Nights. And we need to invest in them. Sky need to invest in them as the, the new guys. Because when Crawler started out, when Quig started, this was the same thing. You know, you get your break headlining and then you kick on from there. 
You've got a brilliant light middleweight chart triangle. Cheeseman is in a fucking tough fight against Sergio Garcia for the European title. But if he comes through that, you've got Fowler Fitzgerald March 30th in Liverpool. Brilliant fight. The winner will fight the winner of that fight. Now we've got some nice things going. You know, hopefully we get Boatsy against Yard, or Boatsy against Burton, or wherever it's going to be. Josh Kelly fights Avenissian, which will be a nice little bit of needle now between those two. Um, and, and that's the new era of fighters. And not just those guys, by the way. Joe Caldina, Connor Ben, Kez Ashfak. You know, all the kids coming out of the Olympic teams, it's time to step up. Some will be good enough, some won't be. If you look at that crop, we took four fighters from the Olympics, the Olympic setup of 2012 to world championship. Charlie Edwards, Cal Yafai, Callum Smith and Anthony Joshua. Four fighters from their pro debut to world championship. The others all did really well. Gamal Yafai won Commonwealth title. Scotty Cardle won British title. Uh, who else was there? Um, Waldy won British Commonwealth European titles. So that it's kind of like that's the level, the minimum level you're going to get to. But who out of this crop is going to go on to win world championships? Is it going to be Josh Kelly? Is it going to be Watsy? Is it going to be Fowler? Cheeseman? All of them. But they're the guys now that we have to start getting behind as the new wave coming through. Okay. How long have we been going? A long time. Was it? Just trying to think. Um, can I ask you about Josh Warrington? What a great year he's had, Ed. Yeah, I texted him the other day and I just said... Um, you're a boy, you are. Or something like that. I mean... Even when I had Josh, I believe I always believed he could beat Lee Selby, right? And I wanted to make that fight. I didn't think that he would necessarily go on and beat Frampton and be as good as he has become, to be honest. Um, another guy who works really, really hard. And another guy, really, if you look at Sean O'Hagan, his dad, mm. no... I mean, no, no real credible boxing training history. No, I'm not, you know, same with Ben Davison, but actually emerged as the right person to take those specific people to the best they can be, mm. you know? And I think Sean deserves a lot of credit. Um, Josh has done brilliant. Steve Wood's done a good job. Nice people, to be honest. Oh, I ain't got a bad word to say about them. Um, and I wouldn't say, maybe, yeah, maybe he has surprised me. Maybe he has surprised me. Like I said, always felt he'd beat Selby. I just felt that Selby was there for the taking at featherweight. And Josh has got a really exciting style. Exciting style. Who's your and I'm pleased with him oh. because, listen, he would have made, I don't know what he made, deep seven figures for the Frampton fight. So he's made a lot of money. And, you know... I don't, I don't have, you know, so I wish people well. I really do. And I'm really pleased for Josh Warrington. Big guy for Frampton, really. Quite like Frampton. And I think he gives everything to the sport of boxing. Um, I think he'll probably retire now. Don't know. Who's been your fighter of 2019? Internationally or domestically? You can do both. Alexander Usyk. Okay. I don't think anybody could go against him. Domest I mean, when you talk about domestic world champions, Warrington's got to be up there. Warrington, Callum Smith. Yeah, Callum. I mean, Callum's standout. Callum's win was more impressive than Warrington's standout win. But... Callum had the Groves fight and the Holzen fight. So, you know, Warrington's wins over Selby and Frampton were impressive. Um, and then, you know, domestically, 
I think Boatsy's had a great year, although he hasn't beaten you know, world ranked fighters. I think he's been super impressive. So AJ's had a great year. He beat Parker and Povetkin this year. He's unified the heavyweight division and boxes mandatory. Fury. Fury. Yeah. Dylan White's had a good Dylan year. Dylan White's had a great year. Fury. I mean, yeah. Dillian's, Dillian's beaten Brown, Parker, and Chisora. That's consistently right up there with all the heavyweights. Um, you know, I think I think it's been another great year. Great year. Who's your promoter of the year? Um, this fat geezer from from Essex. What did you win the other day? Was it, was it like, what did I win? Like dismissing it. Like, no, what did nothing. you win? I won the WBA. Fair enough. Promoter That's of the year, it. and I've got another one drop in today. It's actually quite major. So oh. fuck you. Well, what is it? I'll tell you later because it might not be out. It's actually quite. It's quite big. What is it? Another organisation? No. Ring? No. They, the ring you don't do it. Yeah. Been there, done that. <laughs> you were a Ring magazine promoter, were you? No. Were you not? They don't do a promoter, yeah. What were you then? Just on the front. I was a cover shoot. <laughs> 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 cover star. What are you winning now? It's quite. It's quite a good one. It's not out yet. Let me check if it's out. I liked it. I put that, I retweeted or reposted that WBA thing. Yeah. People put it in, fucking hell, you love yourself, Hearn. You're promoting yourself. It's like, mate, I want to promote the work. Yeah, I've got to tell you, I work my fucking bollocks off. So when I get something like that, fuck you. I'm going to shout about it. Let me just see. I might do some awards next year. You should do. In 100 years' time, we could be as big as the room. Hold on, hold on. Fight for the IFL No, title. not yet. It's not out yet. Can you just show me so I'll know? Yeah. So I can see how credible it is. All right, I'll tell you and you tell me how credible it is. I'm going to rate it from a one, one to ten. Bearing in mind, it's like US focus as well. Fair enough. So start there. Hey, I'll let, read that. All right, that, to be fair, that's pretty big. <laughs> that's pretty big. Yeah. Okay. Fair yeah, so that mugged me off. <laughs> didn't. I just wondered what it was. What's your goals for the new year? More shows, less sleep. Yeah. What do you what What do you want to do though? What? I don't know. I don't know. I've never known what I'm doing. If you haven't really worked it out, it's a tough one, isn't it? You're like, I just want to keep going. Do you know, someone said to me yesterday. Yeah. Um. I was talking to someone and they were, this is going to sound really weird, but they, they like Batman, right? They're, they're like, I don't know, 30, but they like Batman. So they've got a lot of Batman stuff, right? And I always sort of say to them, fucking Batman, what are you like, six? And they said, no, it's just something that, you know, I loved as a kid and you know, I always get a few little Batman bits, you know, and I'm thinking. And then they went to me, What's, what's your thing? Like, what what are you into? And I went, what do you mean? <laughs> and they went, what are you into? Like, in life, you know, what? I went, uh, boxing. <laughs> they went, yeah, yeah, but away from work. Like, what are you into? Um, <laughs> and I sort of went, well, family, my kids. I went, yeah, no, obviously, but you must have something that, you know, you, you follow or you've got a massive interest in or something that makes you smile or happy. I'm like, <laughs> I mean, well, when you were growing up as a kid, what, what we, mate, and I was just lost. I don't know where I'm going with this, but have you got anything? Well, it's like, you're Arsenal, I suppose, isn't it? That's your Football thing. Football is my thing, yeah. I haven't really got that. It's a bit really worrying, a... really. Spider-Man? <laughs> I don't know. I did say He-Man. Do you remember He-Man? Yeah, He-Man. Right, who remembers The He-Man? castle of Greyskull. Yes. Yes. Skeletor. Skeletor. But remember, the last action figure I remember from He-Man. Bear in mind, this is my old house. Name me. Yeah? Name me some characters. In He-Man? Yeah. Do you remember the, oh, the thing cat. you wrote on? Yeah. Battle Cat. Oh, 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 sorry. All right. Now, I only know Battle Cat, He-Man, Skeletor, the Princess of Greyskull. Oh. And that's it, isn't it? Salt she was. But the last one that I remember is, do you remember where they had a shield yeah. and you tap it yeah. and it goes round yeah. and then you tap it again, it's yeah. like... Were you Thundercats? 
Mm, not overly. I do remember Thundercats, but not right. Okay. Yeah, so what I was getting at really is I think I need like a new thing. Interest. Crisps is always your thing, <laughs> wasn't it? Crisps. As you can see, crisps has always been Why my thing. Why did you just say I'm into <laughs> Yeah. I mean, what was your thing growing up? Crisps, really? <laughs> Lots of them. Chipsticks or pickled onions. I've been really lately, I, I, I've been struggling to fill my cart with petrol without buying pickled onion monster munch. You like what you like. That's so nice. How many packets of pickled onion monster munch could you eat I'm not a fan. off the bat? I'm not a fan. I don't like pickled what onions. What crisps do you like? <clears throat> I'd go on the roast beef. Ugh. Walkers? Or Radigans. Roast beef and mustard? Yeah. How many packets of those could you eat? I could go if I wanted to. I, I believe I could eat 20 plus packets. Should we do it? No. Because Why? what we, we put on half a stone. Think of the views. <laughs> think of the artery furring. Yeah. No, think of the views. All right. Well, listen, I appreciate your time as always. It's two day, three days after Christmas. What's your first thing? Is your first thing back to New York? January the 18th. Yeah. Fair. Are you adding Miller to this or not? You Possibly. 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 Yeah. There's a lot happening in the WBA. So. Right, okay. Um, Feb 202. Feb 23, we may be doing a card in America. We're just finalising now. March 15, Philly. Tevin Farmer, Katie Taylor. March 23 could be Newcastle. Okay. Oh, before that as well, there's an Italy and a German show in Feb. March 30th is Liverpool. Really excited about that card. Love Liverpool. I love We haven't been to Liverpool since the Khan show. Remember? And he boxed the Greco. I, I, love, I love promoting Liverpool. Uh, April 13th, Wembley. April 20 could be New York. And that's really where we're up to at the moment. May 4th, hopefully, Canelo Jacobs. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the booze because they used to happen just after the main event. Now they're happening during the undercard as well. So I think it's just a pantomime thing. I think it's like people believe that Eddie Hearn comes in the ring. It's like, oh, right, yeah, we've got to do it. I don't think, I, I don't take it personally. No, no, no. I've been watching, you stop. You stop now. We've had that, it's hard. Boo, yeah, nice one, nice one. And the worst thing is, is when I came out of the O2 the other night after the fight, I stopped down, you know, the walkway. I'd done as many photos as I could. I signed people things that asked me to sign. Uh, I talked to all the fans. And it was like, Eddie, thank you for a great year. What a show tonight. You're the man. And I'm thinking, you booed me. You booed me. And they all go, we didn't boo you. I went, that's a lie, because everybody did. So, thank you for the booze. Thank you for the support. Whatever you think of me, understand this. We're in a great place. If you love boxing, think of where we are now compared to where we were five years ago. We're all moving forward. Whether you like me, whether you like Coogan, whether you like Kelly Maloney or Frank Warren, we're all... Lovers of the sport. Eddie you Hearn? Going? No, because the battery is going to is die. Okay. First time I've ever used the whole battery on one interview, ever. Good. Eddie Hearn, thank you very thank much you. for your time. Thank you, people. Happy New Year. What was that? Oh. What was oh. that? Just want to say shout out to my sponsors, Hugo Boss. Right, send you something now. Double XL, please. Thank and you. can you send Coogan one? Because he's got the referee's kit on. I haven't. I've just come from the... Look. I'm, I'm proper in gym gear. Oh, mate. You're hench these days, aren't you? No. First day back. Thank you very much. Cheers, people.